Super Mario Brothers. Tetris. What made them games? They were similar to sports or board games in as much as there is an end goal, an achievement of sorts, so you could win. Of course, points were involved. Lastly, but perhaps more importantly, they felt like games. When we engage with art, we do so with a multiplicity of motivations, and art fulfills our desires in various ways. One way is a feeling of play, a feeling of participating in something just for the sake of doing it. It's fun, and that's how early video games got their name. Their main level of engagement was fun. Games nowadays are attempting to push beyond the limitations of just being instruments of fun. Don't get me wrong, plenty of amazing games are fun, and I wouldn't want them to be any different. I'm saying it's fine for games to be more than fun. And so our definition of video games grows wider. The definition I offered in yesterday's video, namely that video games are interactive, digital, artistic experiences, aims at widening the borders of what we consider games. Disclaimer. My definition is flawed, but I'll use it, albeit tentatively, for the sake of this video. Now, on to examples. I can't think of two games that better exemplify my definition of video games than Proteus and Dear Esther. In both games, the player is inexplicably placed at the edge of a mysterious island, and the exploration of the island, merely through walking, looking, and listening, constitutes the gameplay. In Proteus, the player embarks on a John Muir-esque experience of taking in the wild landscape and all it has to offer the senses. The bright, pixelated design somehow manages to enhance the game in all of its magnificent simplicity. The game's sounds and music, if you can even separate the two, are procedural, meaning they occur depending on what the player does. Find a brood of chickens? Their scurrying feet and chirps make music in the air. Find a tree with falling leaves, and the leaves make tiny musical tones to harmonize with the environment. As you explore, you eventually find that there is a mild quote-unquote purpose to the game. Explore enough of it, and you transport through time to the next season. There are four seasons, and each is more beautiful than the last. And, like games of old, there is an end. But the end isn't the point. Neither is how fun the game is, though I find it entertaining. No, it is the wonder created at exploring the digital landscape. Does it meet my definition? Obviously. Interactive? Check. You can control where your character goes. Digital? Check. Artistic? Check. Note, when I say artistic, I don't mean like classical art. I mean that the experience isn't just pragmatic. It fulfills desires and motivations outside of our basic human needs. Dear Esther, as you probably can already tell, the game is much more moody than Proteus, but it is no less beautiful. Dear Esther, the gulls do not land here anymore. I've noticed that this year they seem to shun... Your character makes poetic statements in the form of letters to a woman named Esther, and as you explore the island, more and more cryptic information is revealed. One thing that makes this game worth playing several times is that the narration is procedural, like Proteus's music. The statements are made in a different order, and oftentimes with new narration each time you play. The game is ambiguous, but not to its fault. It is emotionally stunning and visually gorgeous in its own way. My interpretation of the game, emphasis on my, is that the player's character lost his wife in a drunk driving accident on the highway, and the island, and your exploration of it, is a metaphor for his healing and emotional rebirth through the tragedy and trauma of the events. All right, does it meet my definition? Like Proteus, it obviously does. It's interactive, it's digital, and it's artistic. Now, does this mean that games aimed at providing simple entertainment don't meet my definition? Of course not. Mario, Tetris, Call of Duty, the FIFA games, they are all interactive, digital, and artistic. What my definition aims to do, however, is broaden our notions of what games may become, especially in terms of experimental or arthouse games. You may be wondering, does computer software thus count as video games? Perhaps. There is an artistry to using well-designed software, and it is most definitely digital and interactive. Perhaps the lines are blurry for a reason. Or, perhaps my definition is incredibly flawed. Regardless, I hope that my discussion of definitions as they relate to video games has been helpful, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. 
email me, message me, or reply to this video to let me know what you think. In the meantime, this is Sky Anderson, and I'll see you next time on Full Screen Thinker.